Welcome back to the show, everyone. We have some things that we want to tell the world today. And by the world, we mean like every single continent listening. You know, we, we have an announcement to make, and that is you should get out there and travel. And not enough people are doing it, um, especially if you are in the pizza world. You may be stuck in the day to day. You may be too busy to do it, or you might be just thinking to yourself, I'll do it next year. But then the year comes and you're like, no, I'll do it next year. And today on the show, we have the super couple travelers, Nicole and Brad Bean, talking to you all today about why it's so important to take that trip tomorrow. Nicole and Brad, welcome to the show. How are you all doing? Great, man. How are you? Excellent. Thank you for asking. Before we get into like the travel talk, there is this one question that I always ask, and I'd love to hear from the both of you. What's good dough? Ladies first. I'll let you go first. Uh Oh, I get to go first? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, What good dough? Everything's good right now. I would say I'm going to mix this up and not go pizza related um, because I want to kind of stay on on the track here. but the world is in a good place right now, and that's what's good. Brad, your turn. Mm. It, it, we're just going to keep it travel related here. So it's a big world, and it's not as scary as you would think it actually is. So get out there and see it. Hell yeah. You all have been on this journey of, and if people don't know, aren't following you on Instagram, you have proclaimed that you're going to be traveling to every single continent in one year. Let's just get that out there. But we all know from Pizza Expo, from your Instagram accounts, you know, if you're in this microcosm of the pizza world, is that you two are hustling pizza. And not hustling in a bad way, but you all have a business, multiple businesses. How the heck are you all doing this, all this traveling that you're doing alongside your pizza lives. I think it's just a priority for us is we have other goals outside of work as well. You know, we have a life outside of the pizza world and that's okay. Um, But I think we just have goals that we uh, realized very heavily during the pandemic that we were needing to pursue those things while we have the time to. So we're just making room other things like travel a priority. Mm. Yeah, making it a priority. That's that's a really crucial step because kind of like we said in the intro, we think about it, we want to do it, but then we put it off, right? How was that discussion between you two, uh, Brad, when when you were like, yeah, we, we need to make this a priority, but, but how? Let's be completely honest. Nicole is the real traveler. I love it. I love seeing the world and I'm, I'm more about the, you know, the architecture and, and the food, obviously, if you've ever seen me, I'm all about the food. Um, but Nicole actually loves to get out there and meet new people. And so when it comes to travel, you know, it's, it's for me, it's, it's try not to say no. Um, we just got back from Egypt and that was scary for me. You know, it's, uh, it's 20 plus million people in Cairo. I mean, we were in the thick of it. Um, once we got there, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So uh, Nicole is the let's go do everything there is to do. And and Brad's kind of like the little guy on her shoulder saying, wait, wait, maybe not. You know, and somewhere in the middle, we kind of <laughs> figure it out. So it's helpful to have that, right? Because it's a balance. And I think. I'm wondering if part of that hesitation for you or for actually just people listening is how do I actually manage my restaurant or leave my job or give people responsibility um, so that I can go out? And maybe you two can talk about how you made that happen, because I think that's some of the barriers that people face. Absolutely. This is a great Brad answer because he's been pushing for a while so brad i'll let you answer this one long the long and short of it is you have to from day one start training your people to take little bites of your world 
um, uh, your pizza world, obviously. And so once you can make them feel comfortable with a certain section, then maybe they can grow and have another section or they're just responsible for that. Um, Ex-military. So that was a thing that we had to do in the military was you, you have to ter- teach the person behind you or beside you in order for you to move forward. So that's a bit of a big goal for me for the last three years is just to get uh, Nicole and her brother out of the day to day. They can come and go as they please. Um, and they can really focus on bringing the world into Pizarro's and we can worry about, you know, bringing the Pizarro's, bringing the customer a, a great product. So for me, that's, that's huge. You've got to train your people and then feel comfortable with what they're capable of doing. A lot of pizza makers are using the wrong type of olive oil for their dough. Let me explain. Using commodity olive oil can have a detriment to your pizza, and I'm talking about a huge one. Whether it's rancidity or a nasty smell, you don't want that on your masterpiece. Say goodbye to commodity oil and say hello to Cordo Olive Oil. Cordo Olive Oil is the ultimate choice for pizza makers like us. Why? Because they use quality olives, they harvest it at their peak, and they store it securely so that when you purchase the olive oil, it is fresh. They pick their olives at their peak, they harvest it, and they secure it in a safe way. That way, it's ready for you when you make your purchase. The choice is yours. Do you want an explosion of flavor, or do you want that nasty, bitter taste on top of your pizza or in your dough? Anytime you need some Cordo olive oil, use the link in the show notes or DM me, and I'll send you that link personally. I appreciate you for supporting me and my show sponsors. I didn't know you were military and that makes sense because it's all about delegation over there. It's about teaching the people who come after you, the skills that you know, there's a lot of education going on. And maybe Nicole, you can answer when Brad started kind of, you know, planting the seed in your mind, were you already thinking it? Was it easy to adapt or adopt? Uh, What were your thoughts there? Uh, This was really challenging because the idea of it sounds amazing, right? So we can get our staff on board doing all the things and getting them trained to, you know, present pizzas and um, present our brand in a way that we want to. But the problem is, is because it's your baby, there's a lot of struggle of letting go. And I would say that I had kind of the benefit of watching my dad struggle to let the business go to me. Um, You know, when he wasn't feeling well for a while there, uh, he kind of delegated, you know, you're going to be in charge. And at first he was like temporary. And then he was like, no, this is this is going to be permanent. I want you to take over. And we had a bit of a tiff of like, are you running it or am I running it? Um, And he finally kind of just hands up and was like, you're running it. I said, great. So then let me do it. Um, And so I had to take notes from my own self and realize that I've got to let my staff and my managers run it. And I've got to uh, adhere to kind of Brad's, I guess, militaristic way. But in in the best part of it is kind of giving up a little bit and understanding that it's not going to be perfect. But that's the process is learning and growing together. So you just have to learn to let go in in small chunks. It's not going to be perfect. They're not going to do it the way that you would do it. But you have to understand that they're going to learn and and maneuver into a way that makes them comfortable and still the product at the end of the day is the same. Well, I was just going to say, you know, there's plenty of pizzerias throughout the world that they don't they don't give their staff days off. They don't give them vacations and stuff like that. They close their doors for two weeks. Because they don't have this mentality. They don't think, you know, um, they could run it while I'm gone. So they just shut down for two weeks of the year and and take their vacation, take their holiday. And this is big in Europe. They do this a lot in Europe. I didn't even think that was due to a lack of ability to delegate. I always thought it was just like, hey, we're all going to go on vacation because we want to, not because... I need a break and I can't trust my staff. I'm sure there are cases where it's both. Of course, yeah. But I didn't even realize didn't. that could have been a primary reason as to why people shut down. Oh my goodness. And I'll tell you, we've <sighs> we've definitely thought about this a handful of times. And you know, it's it's 
well, we'll lose business because people won't come. You know, they, they'll come and the, the doors will be shut and they'll think we're closed and never come back. And it's, you know, I know there's a, a, a thousand people listening to this right now going, yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't, you can't. I promise you, your customer base is going to be there. I promise you. I don't know that we have time to fully teach people how to delegate here. But if you had to leave people with a resource and you can't say, go join the army, what do you think is the next step for them? Uh, I'll tell you the best thing that you can do is get a good mentor. That, that would probably be my biggest thing is uh, obviously you're running a business or you're working in a business and maybe you don't have the best mentor. Um, you can find that through books. You can find that through podcasts. Just ways to find, just ways to structure your world in, in, a, in ways that make sense for a restaurant. Nicole, can you think of any good books? Uh, I'll, I'll always, but there's also mentors out there in the pizza industry as well um, who are running their businesses extremely efficiently and they are willing to help. You know, they're willing to provide you insight to what they're doing and maybe you'll learn a tip or two from that. But one of my books, and I had mentioned this during my seminar at the expo in Las Vegas this year, um, is called Pocket Pocket Guide Life Coach. It's a very small yellow book, um, but that's kind of where this all started. Is um, It's kind of a journaling book where it gives you prompts and then you fill that in. But a lot of it is focusing on what you desire in your future, whether it be a year, three years, or five years from now. Um, but really putting things into place and writing them down and seeing it. Um, when I did this in 2020, I now have, I've now looked back on it. And so we did all these things. I checked all these things off. I am not in the same place I was in 2020. And I'm definitely not in the same place I was this time last year. I was having a breakdown. And this time, this year, I'm in a completely different headspace because of the practices that we've gone through and the things that we've maneuvered through on how to guide ourselves in the, the direction we want to go. Are you looking to level up your pizza game? If so, I highly suggest that you check out Uni, the unrivaled leader when it comes to pizza ovens. Uni pizza ovens are a total game changer. With the ability to reach up to 900 degrees Fahrenheit, you'll have the power to be able to make the pizza of your dreams. What I love about Uni is their portability and versatility. You can bring them anywhere or you can keep them on your patio or in your backyard. And you can make a ton of different styles of pizza with it. They're so fun to use. And guess what? You can use them to start your pizza business too. So whether you're a passionate home pizza baker or a budding entrepreneur, you gotta get with Uni. Use the affiliate link in the show notes. That way, you can let my sponsors know that you heard about them through What's Good Dough. Thank you for supporting me and my sponsors. You know, it's crazy. Yesterday, I was just reading through my pinned notes on my iPhone. And it was because I was trying to clean up some storage space and trying to be a little bit more neat. And then I was looking at these pinned posts. And I was like, should I delete some of these things? Because there's like nine or 10 of them. And I started reading through them. And I noticed I wrote them back a year ago. And it was basically my standard operating procedures for the podcast. At the time, I didn't really have that much help. At the time, I was very much focused on like, how do I get to where I need to be in terms of my goals? And I was just writing a bunch of things down that I'd heard on podcasts, read on books. And then like a year later, as I'm reading them today, I'm like, Dude, I'm knocking these out. And I don't check them every day. But I kind of just, I don't know if it's subconsciously there and I'm thinking it or our brain works better than we think. But if we have like a clear vision of where we want to go, we'll, we'll find the way. It's crazy. It's so crazy. So I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of writing down what you want in life. Um, and then my one resource that I want to leave people with because it's changed my life. There's this guy named Dan Martell. I uh, heard him on a podcast and followed him on Instagram, but his book is Buy Back Your Time. Buy Back Your Time. We'll link all of the books here in the show notes, but oh my goodness, flipped my world around, changed my life, and it's going to continue to change my life. But I think we're on the same page here where it's like 
we need to be able to let go so that we can go do the fun things and go travel. And you two, I think, need to sell the idea more about traveling because I think we we understand the delegating part. But now that we've delegated some of the pizzeria work, maybe they're just going to go and, I don't know, go watch Netflix or something. Why should people get out there and travel? There's, I think there's just like a whole world out there that no one really understands. And the best way to understand it is to see it for yourself. And even though we live in this small little pizzeria world, um, there's so much more to learn that I know there's plenty of classes and things that are online, but there is no better way than having something done hands-on or being present in the physical moment, being able to ask somebody the questions and see the problem happen in front of your face with your own two hands. And that for me is, is traveling, is getting myself out there and seeing it for my own two eyeballs. It's tangible. You really immerse yourself. Yeah. I love that. How about you, Brad? Like, I know you were kind of like, maybe not, but now that you've experienced all this travel in one year, what have you learned? Well, let's, let's not, you know, let's not say this is all Nicole's fault. I, I definitely do. I love to travel and, and the ways that I love to travel. And there's certainly days where I'm like, can we please just sit at the hotel? Can I please just get caught up on work? And, and we still drag out and we experience things. And, um, I, I know for me, you know, coming out of my comfort zones, I, I've, I've grown, uh, a lot and it's because of Nicole, because I've not, you know, fallen back. If it were up to me, I'd be in my garage right now making something out of wood. So Nicole is, is the guiding star when it comes to our travel and what we do and where we go. I think my world of travel has evolved to where it's like, I'm out there, I go to a place and then I get inspiration. And because I can do a lot of like projects remotely, I go and hammer it out when I feel that. Right. But like, I think part of it is being out there in a different country, or maybe I tasted something and think, Hmm, maybe I can make this into a pizza, but how would I do it? Right. Something like that. Absolutely. I, while you're, I mean, while you're traveling, getting, go ahead. So while you're traveling, yeah, heck, it's it. There's not a continent up to this point where we haven't had pizza. Now, don't get me wrong. When we were in Antarctica, we weren't like fighting penguins at the pizzeria. You know, it's not. It wasn't that situation. But we did have pizza down there. It was just on the boat. Um, in Argentina, we had a pizza called the Fugaceta. It was amazing. Big, thick onions on top, and just a lot of ooey gooey cheese in the middle. Um. I don't think we found any pizza in Egypt, but definitely flavor profiles that will be on pizzas very soon at Pizarro's in Houston. So, yeah. It, you heard it here first. I love that. <laughs> Without yeah. a doubt. Uh, Nicole, what were you going to add? I mean, you you travel frequently as well. And like even up and down the California coast, like I've seen you traveling and you come back and you make something that you saw on your travels. And it, it's one of those things. I see you find inspiration. And you're like, oh, I never thought about doing that. Let me replicate this. Let me try it for myself. And I really appreciate that you do that because that's what it's about. Yeah. The world is so big and broad and there's nothing wrong with staying in your lane and just doing the same repetitive thing. Not repetitive. I make it sound like a bad thing. But like I think of uh, um, maybe like an Anthony Manjiri who just keeps it Neapolitan and that's it, right? Where I'm at like... And there's nothing wrong with that. Or you could be the Idrif who's like, I want to try this style. I want to try that style. Oh, what if this cuisine goes better on a tavern or a bar or something? And like, it's exciting, at least for me. And so that's why I'm such a huge fan of this. I'm a huge fan of what you all are doing. Appreciate it. Thank you. Is there anything else that we need to tell the listeners um, to kind of wrap up this segment? Because in the next segment, we're going to talk more about the how how are brad and nicole doing all this traveling because like yeah y'all are business owners and yeah like you have money coming in but like y'all just flew business class like i mean maybe you can give us some tips on you know how you're doing this so that's going to be in part two um but is there anything else that we need to talk about to sort of wrap this conversation up maybe final words final words on this section for me is you can't get time back. So if there's something that you want to do, 
do it while you have the time. And do it while you're young enough to do it. Uh, unfortunately, in a lot of our, you know, staple, you know, staple areas that we go to, you see the old folks and they're coming off the boat or the plane and they can barely hobble through it and, you know, enjoy it while you're young. Make it, make it a priority, as Nicole said earlier. Enjoy life, guys. You know, it is about providing for your family and your employees, but you've got to enjoy it because it, tomorrow is not promised. I very much live by that. Thank you so, so much. You know, you, you, you brought this like, when I think of someone who can afford an Antarctica cruise, I do think of someone who's retired. And when you tell me that they can barely like get off, like some of them may not be able to get off the boat and cobble through. It's just like, oh my goodness, you're so right. Like we, if we can do it, if we can find the means to do it, if we can make the time and the space to do it, great. You now know that there's a path to make the space, go out there and do it. If, uh, if this is the first time you're hearing about this and now we're going to talk about the means in part two. So we'll see you all there. Brad, Nicole, thank you for being on this show. Appreciate y'all. Thanks, Rod. Thank you. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that conversation. And if you're wondering when the next part comes out, you got to subscribe. That way you get notified when the next episode is coming out. You can subscribe by following the show. Please remember to share this with a friend. Remember to leave a rating. I appreciate you. I love you. Till next time. Peace. Hey, home pizza makers. What's good, dough? It's time for you and me to partner up together and make pizzas for good. How do we do that? You and I will be doing pizza parties nationwide to raise money for Slice Out Hunger. And yes, it is starting now. So if you want to be a part of my team and make pizzas for good, you can register to be a part of Team What's Good Dough. And yes, it is welcome to all bakers, whether you're just starting off or you're a seasoned pop-up pro. Let's make pizza for good together. What's happening? What's good, dough? It's your boy, Idrif. And if you're thinking, whoa, that just brought me back to a place long, long time ago where Idrif used to do one long podcast. None of this, oh, he'll break it down into three parts to make it more digestible, blah, blah, blah. If you're part of that old crew and you are missing the old style podcast, don't you worry. I've been listening to your feedback and I got you fam. Here's the thing. I am making these shorter podcasts for people who are just jumping onto the What's Good Dough train today in 2023. But if you miss the old podcasts and you want to listen to them from beginning to end in just one go, heck, if you want to listen to the podcasts with no ads, I have two solutions for you. The free solution is that you can sign up for my email list. If you sign up for the email list, there is a link in the show notes and I will invite you to my private podcast feed. There you will get one episode every time there's a new podcast episode from beginning to end, no ads, all in one take. No more waiting for this part one, part two, part three stuff. I got you. The second way is if you sign up for Patreon. There you will get exclusive content plus the podcast from beginning to end, no ads. So free, sign up for the email list or not free, supporting your boy. You can go ahead and get exclusive content and ad-free listening all in one go. All that is going to be linked in the show notes. I appreciate you. I love you. Till next time. Peace.